The second process is identify risks, and this is when we determine which risks might affect the project and document the characteristics of those risks. Now, this process has many, many inputs and lots of tools and techniques, which is important to note because when we work on a project, our objective is to identify all risks. We can identify more risks only when we look at the same project from different perspectives. If we use a variety of tools, we will identify more risks than we would using a single tool or technique like brainstorming. So just be prepared for lots of tools and techniques in this process. However, there is a single output. The one thing that we want to come out of this process is the risk register, which we define as a document that contains a list of the identified risks and a list of potential responses. The preparation of the risk register begins in this identify risk process, and then it becomes available to other project management and risk management processes. Essentially, we are continuing to add information to the register each time we go through one of the processes in risk management. So let's consider this risk register, all of the inputs for the identify risks process of the project risk management knowledge area. The inputs for the identify risk process of the risk management knowledge area are numerous, as you can see here, and to be sure, you have seen some of these inputs before. Risk management plan. As I mentioned before, this document outlines how we are going to manage risk on the project. Cost management plan. Through this, we can use processes and controls to identify risks across the entire project. Schedule management plan. This helps us manage our time and schedule objectives, knowing all the while that they could be affected by known and unknown risks. Quality management plan. This gives us some measures and metrics for identifying risks. Scope baseline. Project assumptions are found in the project scope statement. Uncertainty in project assumptions should be evaluated as potential causes of project risk. Activity cost estimates. This ties our expectations of how much the scheduled activities for the project create individual or overall risk. These figures are usually expressed as a range, and they usually let us know whether the estimate is or is not enough to complete the activity. Activity duration estimates. We have to estimate how long each activity will last so that we can project whether those estimates propose any risk. Stakeholder register. If we have information about the stakeholders, then we can leverage that information for identifying risks. So those are all of the possible inputs for the identify risk process. In addition to many inputs, the identify risks process of project risk management involves the following seven tools and techniques to achieve the output of this whole process which you'll remember is the risk register. The first, documentation reviews. We review all of our files, documents, and plans for quality and consistency so that we can identify possible risks to our project. The next, information gathering techniques. There are lots of ways to gather information. Brainstorming is always good, and so is interviewing project stakeholders, participants, and subject matter experts who may have insight into potential risks. One alternative to brainstorming is called the Delphi technique, in which a project manager solicits opinions and advice from people and then includes that information anonymously with the other documentation of risks that have been identified. One benefit of this Delphi technique is that it makes brainstorming sessions available to people who may be located elsewhere geographically. Also, some people prefer giving anonymous feedback, which may not necessarily have been offered freely during a brainstorming session. It prevents individual bias. Another good way to gather information is to perform a root cause analysis to identify a problem, discover the underlying causes that lead to it, and develop preventive action. Next, checklist analysis. As a project manager, you can go through project documents from a prior similar project and review a list of those risks identified and create a checklist of these risks which can help us identify additional risks on the project. Assumptions analysis. By looking through project documentation, we will be aware of the assumptions that have been made on the project and if we determine that assumptions are not true, they could become sources of risk. Diagramming techniques. 
A type is referred to as cause and effect diagrams, and they help us identify risks on a project. SWOT analysis. A highly beneficial technique in this process is conducting a SWOT analysis, which stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It visually provides a perspective on risk that will help identify most significant project risk factors. And finally, expert judgment. The key output in the Identify Risks process is the Risk Register, which is a document that contains a list of the identified risks and a list of potential responses. You will see that we continue to add information to the register each time we go through one of the processes in risk management. Make a note of this as we continue to go through the remaining risk management processes.